we're very well aware that the, the, the kind of jump we have to achieve, you know, from the uh, w- w- uh, air cool to water cool. Not only the drive train change, but also the the uh, the generation of manufacturing have to you know switch because you cannot still you know selling you know uh, visible uh, drip rail on the roof. You know people laugh about it. These are really an old timer kind of a vehicle. <laughs> we cannot you know sell car like that to compete against the BMW or, or, or Audi and Mercedes because they are all you know modern manufacturing. You know. Uh, so we had to switch and then, um, you know, it's really like sky is the limit in terms of design. But at the end of the day, you have to make sure all the big bosses recognize, oh, this is the, the new 9-11. Welcome to 9 Mike's TV. We've got a very, very, very special episode for you today. We're going to meet designer of the 996, Mr. Pinky Lai. You may remember a couple of years ago, it was actually during lockdown, uh, I interviewed Mr. Lai myself and we talked extensively about his design for the fifth generation of 911, the Type 996. Well, this time I'm handing it over to you, chiefly Nineworks members. Nineworks members recently got the opportunity as part of the Nineworks 25th year anniversary celebration of the 996 to put their questions to Mr. Pinky Lai in many cases, this was a scenario of a 996 owner putting a question to the very person that designs the car they own and drive, which was really, really cool. Incidentally, if you'd like further opportunities like this going forward, just sign up to Nineworks. It's nineworks.co.uk. It's free of charge and will bring many additional benefits to owners and enthusiasts of all generations and types of Porsche. Anyway, let's bring you highlights of that virtual roundtable chat between Mr. Pinky Lai and Nineworks members. It was recorded via Zoom, so you'll have to forgive the audio and visuals in places, but I think you'll agree there were some cracking questions and some even better answers coming from Mr. Lai himself. Let's dive in. Pinky, thanks for joining us this evening. It's a, it's a real honor for myself and, and for the other Nineworks members, many of whom are 996 owners, to have you with us. Um, your legacy, particularly among this group, is sensational. Uh, your design culminated in 175,000 examples of the Porsche 996 being made. It feels like most of them are going to be at Heritage Parts Centre for tomorrow's Friday's anniversary meet, which is fantastic. <laughs> Many different iterations along the way, Carrera, Turbo, Targa, GT2, GT3, etc. But it, it all hails from, from your design. So thank you on many, many fronts for joining us and, and for creating the car. I'm speechless, you know, lit- literally. Uh, it, it's, it's an honor to be, to be uh, remember, you know, still the father of, uh, of such a great design and great car, just fantastic looking car. You know, a quarter of a century old, how does that feel? to have your design now at 25 years old? Well, I, I still feel very, very proud. I still do a, a bit of uh, cross country driving between Spain and Germany quite a lot. And every time when I spotted the, the 996 and then it's just, it's just amazing, amazing memory and I, amazing sight, you know, it's still fantastic looking among all the traffic right in the middle of it and, you know, you know well, that is that is not a not a, a usual nine eleven for sure, and it's, uh, it's the strongest character you have to say um, compared to any contemporary nine eleven. We managed to 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 bring out two different front end character, you know, because of the headlamp change, and it just n- never happened before in the in the history of of, of Porsche. You look at our headlamps, the two headlamps, they are. They are really sculptural, free forms, uh, kind of uh, headlamp that uh, say a lot about the character of the car, the front end. Yeah. Sculptural is a great word to describe the 996. I think everybody here will agree. Um, I've got one more question from me, and then I'm going to pass over to, to the members in the group this evening. Um, so, Pinky, you, in our previous uh, YouTube interview, you described the opportunity with the 996 as, as you know, the last bullet, Porsche's last bullet. I would like to know, deep down, for you, did you think you were designing the last 911, the Swan Song 911? No, uh, th- there, there, is, there is another event happened uh, almost the same time 
when we were asked to, you know, everybody come up with new idea about the the rescuer or the the, the saver savior of 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 the company of the nine eleven of the company, and something you know from my from my uh, private uh, private life, you know, some 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 drama happened at the same also at the same time, and in fact, I was I was I was showing up in the company sort of half time only because I had to take care of uh, you know my wife and then. Uh, Two little kids and the dogs, and it was a nightmare. <laughs> and I was saying to Ham, uh, you know, Ham, the guy was was running the whole whole studio. And I said, "Hey, I will make it up. I will make it up, but I have to take care of my family and so on." So I just show up half days and then half the other half day, and I have to take care of the families. And in a period of two to three weeks, and I just banged out a lot of lot of uh, hand sketches and and just my own show kind of uh, show to harm and then and then we just pick one and then that's it and then that will be transformed into full size tape and then and then one of the leading models the one who actually the one who built the three thirty uh three fifty six who modeled the three fifty six you know this. Is the oldest, the most senior kind of uh, modeler. He walked past my tape. He said, "This is my model." <laughs> so he wanted to model my car. So I was wow. So it's already a winner, you know. And, uh, because there were a lot of tapes, full size tapes in 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 all the different studios, you know, all the competitors. It's like a internal uh, in internal competition. Uh, there were at at a, at a time six. Apes, full size, sort of different themes. So it was a great compliment from a, from a very senior model. And so, and then the rest is history. We really didn't have time to worry about oh, it, might be my last Porsche or my last 911. And maybe that's, uh, that's my advantage. You know, I didn't really think about oh, it might be the last one. So you better be careful and, you know, do your best or stuff like that because. You know, my fa family's tra tragedy, you know, just, just put me in a certain, sh uh, uh, a certain shadow or, or dark area so that I don't really have, have the mindset to worry about, oh, what happened to Porsche? You know, what happened to the 911? Pinky, that's a very honest answer. So, you know, thank you for, for sharing that with us. Um, look, at, at, at this stage, I will open, um, open the floor. So uh, I'll invite Tim Eagle, first of all. Hi, guys. Hi, Pinky. Thank, thank you for the time this evening. Much appreciated. So two part question, if, if that's OK. Um, so was there a design feature that you had doubts over when you were designing the car that you left in and in hindsight you're proud of and think works, but had doubts over at the time? In hindsight, I think there is one feature. I don't think it uh, is on the car. That was the wiper, the front wiper. I would almost call it a, a commercial wiper system. Uh, but in fact, I intended to create a, a sculptural kind of white arm. The last bit of that metal, you know, connecting to the rubber, rubber wipe, yeah, that is the, a regular kind of metal, metal strip. But the one who is, which is holding that, that metal strip, is is a free form. It could be a free form instead right. of you know this full metal kind of uh, you know stereotype kind of uh, wiper arm. Um, I had done some sketches to you know, how to design that that special wiper arm system, and uh, but it's just too expensive. And but at the end, I think we put that on. Uh, we used that put that design on uh, on the rear wiper of uh, of. Of the Cayman, I think the rest is really um, you have to understand the whole the whole car every bit, not only sheet metal, sheet metal area, but also all the details. Uh, is has been under really the heaviest scrutiny by the cost controlling bin counter. You know, every every time they walk past the studio, when they see something new, they said, "Oh, is that?" Is that feasible? Is that, uh, you know, how much does it cost? And, and stuff like that. And 
and and uh, and um, it's a nightmare every time. They are they are around the studio every day. You know it, that that is the situation. The great answer and and a, and a nice lead into the the kind of second half of the question, which was. Was there one design point overall that you really wanted in the design that Porsche wouldn't let you put in for cost or for whatever other reason? Strangely, no, because I almost got everything I uh, uh, I was asking for. Even even uh, uh, it was not allowed in the beginning. You know, the moving spoiler at the back at Porsche, they always have a catalog. They, they call it uh, in German uh, target catalog. So that before you even start designing, they will hand over a catalog to you and say, hey, this is the performance, this is the body shape, this is this and this and this. And they even write, write up uh, uh, the, the aerodynamic coefficients, you know, what is the minimum you have to achieve and this and that, and performance. And But for the moving spoiler, no word mentioned moving spoiler. That means it's a fixed rear end. There's no moving part at the rear end, okay? And, you know, it's a long, long uh, battle in the wind tunnel. Yeah. You know, everybody was, was virtually pissing on, on my model because my model was the last survivor of the whole, you know, design review and all the, all the uh, scrutiny. And the only survival and every every all the all the board of director approved and then still surviving and so on. And then the last hurdle was aerodynamic. And then we were spending hundreds and hundreds of hours in, in wind tunnel. And finally I managed to to use a little trick, you know, just instead of a whole spoiler moving, I started with a just one louver in the spoiler grill that is moving, you know, just, just sliding out and in and out. It's like a tongue sticking out of the spoiler grill. And to demonstrate, hey, that changed the whole picture of the aerodynamic. And then I bought in, I called in the, the so-called the, the boss of the project management because he controlled the cause. Sure. Okay? Because he's the one we report to the board of director that, hey, we are over budget, we are under budget, you know, things like that. So he control all, he's the bin counter. I called him in into the wind tunnel. I said, hey, you see the difference? You know, if you want a car, we need just little, little moving lips. And then he was, you know, of course, he asked, oh, how much would that be? You know, the development and the manufacturing all this. And while they were working on the cause, I move on to the next stage. And then I was taking the whole, the, all, all the louvers in, in the in, in the in the uh, spoiler grill, and moving the all the all the louver also moving out instead of one louver, and then that that changed the picture. He was forced to you know spend money on the on the complete moving spoiler because hey, you want a car that uh, achieves a, a, a lap time at a new rain or not. Which design feature are you most proud of overall on the 996 and why? It's very difficult for me to break down the car uh, in, 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 in details. I, 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 I still look at, look at cars, any car today, as an overall uh, a, a huge piece of uh, sculpture first, you know, whether it's, it's appealing or not. It's like, it's like when, you, when you look at a new car with, with your eyes half closed, just to read the silhouette first of the whole body, okay? Uh, from, from different angle, different perspective. And then you start opening your, your, your eyes and then look at, you know, start focusing on, on certain area of the car. So that was, that was, that was really the main goal. We, um, we really ignore the detail, uh, the, the first stage of design or, or modeling. We just want to get the, the sculptural, you know, basic shape, the proportion right. All the corner transitions and and make sure there's no slap side, uh, body side, or bumper bumper sections. That was mo mostly our concern. And then once we as roughly establish the basic shape, and then we get into the details. And all the detailings they are they are equally important in a, in a way. We pay a lot of attention in details. You know the models and. Even headlamps, head lamps, head lamp, you know, nowadays you look at it, you know, you, I, I think you criticize it, you like it or you don't like it, but it's a lot and lot of work because we didn't have the digital tool at the time. 
everything is hand hand built or hand hand drawn you know sure. and, um, well, you got a biased audience, but we think you've done a great job. So thank you. OK, so uh, next of the uh, kind of pre empted questions, uh, Kester Hewitt. And it's a great honour to meet you, Pinky. I've only had my nine, nine, not that it's a competition, but I've only had mine for 14 years. With like the Boxster project and the 996 project, both sort of starting at a similar or at the same time. Exactly the same day. <laughs> the same day. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to understand how, you know, clearly you you were designing the, the sort of 996, how you work together, but also, you know, in shared aspects like the headlights and, but still were able to sort of do your own thing and make it your own. It's the first time in our, in our life, uh, in, in my life and my colleagues at that time, we never experienced that kind of working, working uh, process and relationship before. It's like we are sort of uh, studio by studio, sort of just next, next to each other. Um, there is just one wall between us. And um, in, the, in the first couple of, uh, couple of days, let's say, we would, we would move along kind of similar line of sections and uh, proportion and character of the door of the fenders of the whole front end let's say and exception is of course the bumper if they are different bumper but headlamp bum or bonnet fenders and doors they are the same uh, they have to be the same at that time and um and it was a learning experience how to work with each other you know um it was it was grand larson on uh, on the boxsters because he did the, uh, the Detroit uh, show car, Boxster show car. And then he had to, had, they had to turn that into a feasibility model because the Detroit show car was not feasible. Um, at the same time, um, he had to, he had to um, adjust or made a certain adjustment so that uh, it would fit the 996 as well. So there is a lot of uh, uh, things going on every day um, after the first couple of days. And then we will uh, compare sections of the door of the fenders. Um, we started with um, differences between, you know, uh, centimeters of, of material difference. <laughs> maybe maybe on, the, on the Boxster fender, it was, it was uh, half a centimeter kind of less material in the fender thickness and so on than the 996 and then slowly we um, we we compromise on on a lot of areas so I, I I think we did a pretty good job considering you know the kind of uh, uh, tensions and uh, and you know stress and it's not only the, among the designer it's also among the modeling team they are, you know, struggling, you know, they, are, they try to, you know, hey, this one fit better to the 996, sort of the transition to the rear fender or to the roof or to whatever, to the bumpers, then, 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 the, then, the, then the Boxster or the Boxster fit better to their rear fender because the transition, the nightmare area is the transition from the door panel to the rear fender. Because the, um, the, um, the Boxster, it doesn't have a C pillar. To consider so it's just you know it's like you can just take the door section just extend it you know back but we cannot do that we have to you know very quickly um you know turn it into a a, a, a giant sec s section the s section you know this is the one over the rear tire the rear uh, wheel arch and up to the c pillar that is the big s okay um um, which is which is a, a, a much bigger challenge than the, than on the nine um, boxes. So apart from that, then uh, we are very happy with the result because at the end of the day, it's the it's the big bosses. You know they have to really you know agree you know to the appearance of the two two different cars uh, based on the common parts. Uh, you know it's it's like you know it, it, you cannot. You cannot, uh, if, if they could, they would, you know, spend money on building two different, you know, sets of tools for different front ends. Okay. 
but it's just that they only have enough uh, cash for, for one car. So they were lucky that they got one and a half cars kind of out of, out of you know, one car cause. And, and then the turnover is just absolutely uh, amazing in the history of, of, of company. Until the 993, the, the tooling course the, or, the, or the assembly time, it's like there is a time traveling of 20 years. <laughs> it's like at that time we were talking about, oh, this 30 years old, the, the, the assembly method, the manufacturing of the 993, basically it never changed. You just have to look at the, the visible uh, rain, uh, the rain, the rain drip. You call it the drip rail at, on the roof. Rain gutters. And yeah. that is really old school. That is, you know, that's, that's where they weld the roof to the forty side. And all of a sudden, we are building a one piece forty side. You know, can you imagine the rocker panel? All the way to the the, the whole uh, the the rear fender all the way up to the C pillar, the roof frame, down the A pillar is one piece of tooling. So there was a situation. Uh, and then you slowly understand, wow, this is really a big deal. Alex Schrader. What was the situation like at Porsche, not necessarily financially, but when you were assigned this task to, 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 come, up, to come up with a new 911 design, was it already intended as this major design evolution as we see it today? Or was that basically an open design process and it was basically then up to you and up to the other designers to, to, to tackle the job? Well, there isn't really a first briefing that gather around and then we have a briefing section now. And it's, uh, it's a constant evolving from day to day evolvement. A few times, not one time, a few times um, together with Mr. Markat. Mark, Markat was the the VP of uh, R&D, the boss of R&D, okay, advisor. And we, we, came, we, got, we got along very well because I was, I was accompanying him to uh, a few times to the so-called the package office. The package office is really the, the, the cradle of 996. That's where they lay out all the engine room, suspension, uh, wind, screen, uh, wind, wind, wind screen angle, and then the roof height, the interior uh, dimension, you know, everything, the whole cage inside and outside, and uh, tire size, et cetera, et cetera. So there's no cheating. And it's, it's a lot of give and take, you know, when you, when, every time when you face, face the pack, package group, they think, they, I think still today, they think they are God, you know, they were, because, they are the one who start every new project. They lay out the dimension, they lay out all the parameters, so there's no cheating so that you guys work along those parameters. So it was, it was a lot of uh, give and take moment at that time because you know once this is frozen, then you are not allowed to change any package. Uh, 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 how do you call that uh, uh, restraint? Because this is like a Bible once it's frozen. And Markat was very, very concerned about, you know, two one-sided, try to, try to, you know, balance, you know, between engineering and design and et cetera. So I was, I was with him a couple of times over in the package office and slowly the package arrived to us to, 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 to a certain stage that, that it will be open for all the designers. Well, designer in the beginning, they only have the rough dimension, overall dimension, you know, how long, how tall, and how, how wide. And then it comes down to the, the, the sort of the micro area, like uh, the, the, size, uh, the side glass have to be on that spot. It cannot be further in and not further out. And uh, windscreen have to be there, and then backlight have to be there, and uh, headlamp location, tail lamp location, everything. We work along that kind of line, you know, it's like um, um, the design, of course, is, is free, but you have to, based on the package, you know, you have to meet the package. So that's how uh, things happen. You know, it's like today, if you look at, look at, um, look at, uh, well, I don't want to say anything about a contemporary 9-11, but at that time we were, 
our concern was, hey, look at look at the 993. It's such a compact, you know, that that is uh, what's sweet about the, the old 911 is, you know, the tightness, everything is tight, even in this sit inside, but it was getting too tight inside. That's all, you know, you rub shoulder with, you know, when you're going through the corners and uh, you cannot uh, have any luxuries or, or you know, uh, comfort and etc. So we, we were building it kind of, it has to be that big in order to accommodate all this package requirement, all these elements, you know, uh, electric this, electric that, everything. Um, so that that was the challenge most mostly. And we try not to overblow the whole, we try not to overblow, you know, the size, the dimension, you know, trying to, you know, keep it as, uh, as compact as we can with our design. And we were already complaining about it you know, among ourselves, oh, it's getting really big, you know, because of the package. We were just following the package. Well, thankfully, the car still feels pretty small, pretty compact, you know, compared to the modern ones. So, yeah. uh, which is, in, which is, I think, one thing that we all appreciate today. So, um, in hindsight, yeah, we, we really, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm very, very proud of that, especially the, about the size of the mm -hmm. 996 compared to the order contemporary. For me, as a, as a Mark I GT3 owner, um, I, I just have to ask it this because for me, the, the 996 design language just feels perhaps most natural or most consequent in the Mark I GT3. Um, how were you involved or you or your colleagues involved in the design process of the initial GT3? How was the work with the guys in Weissach at the time? We worked separately. Uh, GT3, GT3, I think is a is a um, is a project um, responsible by the um, uh, I think they call it the, the motorsport department. It is um, separated from the uh, project management. Project management cover all the uh, hard top, soft top, turbo, but as as soon as it get into GT uh, category. I think it belongs to uh, the motorsport department. Top stuff, guys. Top stuff. Um, Alex B, if uh, if you wouldn't mind jumping in. How does it feel to you personally when you still see these cars driving around the streets? I would try to chase it, <laughs> chase after it, or try to follow it, and just try to enjoy enjoy you know the the the, the, the sight you know of following a nine eleven anything nine ninety six, and in the beginning, in fact, I I I, I took photos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, by following it, and uh, but but now now I gave up uh, because uh, it's just too dangerous, and so that's how I feel. You know, it's still attractive, and uh, that's drawn my attention, and you know, really, really enjoyable to to look at them. And which which manufacturers nowadays do you think are doing um, nice things in terms of car design? I don't really pay attention to any 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 new new generation of, uh, of uh, you know, especially now we are right in the middle of the switch, you know, from uh, from gas engine car to electric, uh, electrification, everything. So it's, um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a very, very funny moment. Thank you very much. No, no further questions. <laughs> nice one, Alex. Thank you. Uh, Michael Mont. It's really hard to design around modern regulations. So how do you think designers of future 911s will try and, you know, make a sports car when it has to be a certain height oh. or weight, you know, how do you, how do you work around that as a designer? Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's a very, very good question. I never, I never thought of that uh, as, as, a, as, as, a, as a challenge. Um, if I, if I have to do a, 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 a next generation of 911 or a new 911, I would go wild, definitely. It's still recognizable. It's a is 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 a nine eleven. But I wouldn't I wouldn't let any you know new technologies or autonomous driving you know especially especially autonomous driving is 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 a waste of time uh, when when you are talking about nine eleven or any sport car sports car in general. Yeah, why 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 would you you know pay pay for such a car? And not, not driving it yourself, and not having fun yourself, 
and let autonomous, uh, you know, uh, have, have fun. We should be talking about uh, generation set. You call it generation set now? Um, yeah. Sort of the, Gen the Z. Current yeah. New generation. It's not. It's not X or Y anymore. It's, I think it's set. They, 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 they wouldn't have that kind of uh, uh, classic, classic uh, car kind of uh, culture, and and especially you know car tradition. You know how you look at a uh, classic car or look at uh, uh, icon, iconic car like 911. They just want to, you know, have the, have the most, uh, have the most, uh, most bang for the money. Mr. Sutherland? I just wanted to know with the, obviously everyone talks about the headlights of the 996 as the main thing about it, but was that the main directive behind the facelift? And which set of headlights do you prefer? Once we sign off the 996, sort of uh, the, 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 the 996 headlamp, the first set of headlamp, which was already revolutionary, um, there were absolutely no critic about it, you know, or what they res resemble or what, what this and that. You know, it's, it's, it's all this media hype, is hyped up by the media. In fact, I can tell you a story. Um, one of the proposal, headland proposal, was an orange, orange uh, ellipse as turn indicator running around the main headland. Sort of, it's like you can imagine the current shape, but without the, the kind of side extension to, uh, to the lower corner, but it's just an extended kind of a stretch ellipse shape one of my proposals, the turn indicator, the orange uh, area, is not one spot, it's, it's a circle. It's, it's like a orbit around the main headlamp uh, functions. Now, could you imagine if that, if, that, if that design came out? Oh, it would be, a <laughs> it would be more appropriate to call it that way. But um, at that time, the orange was only on the lower lower tip area, and everybody was happy about it, including you know the CEO, board of director, everybody, you know all the shareholder. They came and then they okay it. So, uh, so don't blame me for it. And right <laughs> right at the same time, right at the same time they signed off with that first headlamp, I was already working on the turbo. And the turbo we knew already is going to be a new fender. It's, it's a different fender, a wider fender. Once we have a wider fender, then we managed to convince the, uh, the, the project management, hey, we need a new headlamp. You, by using the same module, but a new headlamp glass and this and that, a new arrangement of all the different uh, function. And then we managed to, you know, get the get the budget for a new headlamp for the for the turbo because we said uh, we convinced them that hey, we can use that uh, fender and then the turbo fender and then the, the turbo headlamp for the next generation sort of the facelift of the base nine nine, uh, nine and six. So they agreed to it, you know, after all the costing calculation and separate comparison. We are if, in fact using more or less the same module, the in, in inside module but with a different different housing, different glass, and make it a new headlamp. Basically, uh, it's not really uh, expensive to have a completely new appearance. So we agree to it. So it's, it's, a, it's a combination of a colleague and, and mine design on, on, the, on the turbo headlamp. I was, normally I wouldn't let anybody touch my, my model, okay? They could, they could stand there and look at it, but He's not supposed to start taping it up, this and that. But I was watching him and said, well, oh, okay, okay, that's, that's, that's fine. So I just let him do it. Maybe I was just too busy with a lot of other stuff, technical stuff going on, and uh, especially the, the rear end, the spoiler. Oh, the spoiler was, was great on the turbo. And it's the first time we have that split pane, uh, 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 plane kind of uh, uh, double, double plane kind of spoiler. And then the first run in the wind tunnel is already smashing. And in terms of downfalls and coefficients and everything. And we were so happy. Yeah, on behalf of Barrett, maybe we'll, we'll push you maybe for a one word answer to finish as to what headlights you prefer on the 996, the Gen 1 or the Gen 2. 
Pinky. Oh, I cannot, I cannot, I, I cannot <laughs> say one or the other, but I can only say one, uh, um, which has a little bit of uh, advantage is the uh, wash jet on the turbo lamp. It was punctured through the glass, you know, that chrome cap. Yeah. And in fact, it's sitting on top of the cylinder, the jet cylinder. And then that jet cylinder is punctured through the housing, through the glass. And we were so proud of it. It was revolution in, in the car industry. Nobody dared to pun, puncture, puncture a, a hole through the, through the headlamp housing and then the glass. And it's just fantastic. You know, it's, uh, and it's, uh, it's a fantastic solution. We were very proud of it. But you know the um, uh, the the nine ninety six headlamp is just as great as well because even today I think a lot of colleagues today's colleagues at Porsche they would dream of doing a head, new headlamp like that you know <laughs> but they are not allowed to do it <laughs> so this is something I would never regret of doing I'm 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 so happy that we have done that uh, the two headlamp especially. Oh, that will stay there in the history. You know, everybody would dream of doing that. Oh, without a doubt. It's, 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 you know, chiefly kind of what the car is, is, is known for and what sets it apart from its predecessors and successors on, on the 911 model lines. So, um, yeah, look, it's our privilege to be driving these cars around with, with that fact firmly in our minds. So um, I think we'll wrap it up there. I would just like to say on, on behalf of everybody um, in this group and, and who will see it later on on YouTube, again, thank you, Pinky, for, for, for your time in telling us plenty of stories that we would never have otherwise known. So we're really, really grateful for you giving that time up. We hope to see you soon in person as well. So look after yourself. Have a great day tomorrow. And then don't forget to send me the link to material and uh, goodbye. <laughs>